guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I am super super excited to be showing you my manga collection for the year 2017. I absolutely love watching manga collection videos on YouTube and I am so excited that I get to make one as well. So this collection has been about seven years in the making. So I think I started collecting when I was 16 and when I was in high school. So it's absolutely completely blown up since then and it's kind of become overwhelming. So there's about 950 volumes in this collection I would say. I haven't counted it recently. I do know it's definitely 950 but my collection is kind of large and kind of overwhelming so it's really hard to give you like a full pan of the collection with just the way that my room is set up. So I will do a slow pan and I will talk to you about how I have each shelf set up so you can just get the general gist of what it looks like but a lot of the shelves have two rows uh, stacked behind it so you won't be able to see everything until I go through each shelf individually. So this is the first shelf and this is for the Overflow series and just some series that have officially been completed. On this shelf I keep the Overflow of my oversized volumes. I have my non-completed series, series that I need to get more volumes of to complete or ongoing series that the publisher is still releasing with the exception of this little boys over flower series because this is where I put the series that I'm currently reading and yeah this shelf is a lot smaller than the other one which makes me happy but there's still a lot of series on here that I do plan on completing by the end of the year. So without further ado, let's get into the manga collection. On the top shelf, I have Alice in the Country of Hearts, volumes one to three. Really didn't like this series. I thought it was a bit dull and a bit boring, so I will not be buying any more of the Alice spin-off series. And then I have the Azumanga Dio Omnibus. And here's the rest of my Death Note collection because I can't fit any more Death Note on the shelves than where the rest of the series currently is. So here is the Change the World light novel, Death Note, How to Read, Volume 13, and the Another Note light novel, which was absolutely fantastic and was one of the first light novels that I ever read. And then I have Flower of Life, Volume 3, and the Very Rare, Volume 4. Haven't got around to buying one or two yet, but they are not hard to find. It's only Volume 4. And then I have Goodnight Pun Pun, Volumes 1 to 6. I thought I knew what they were doing with these spines. I really thought it was just going to be the back of Pum Pum and it was just going to make a nice little like drawing. But now with the release of Volume 6, I really don't know what they're going for with it. But I still need to get into this series. I'm just waiting for the last volume to come out and then I'm going to binge it. And then Helter Skelter by Kyoko Kazaki. A really good Jose one shot. I really enjoyed it. And then K on volumes one through four, the college spin off and the high school spin off. I really need to read these, especially the last two. And then I have the beautiful message to Adolf hardcovers by Vertical, part one and part two complete. I was very lucky to actually get message to Adolf. I literally bought it. I think a week before it went out of print. If I hadn't have seen it in my comic book store that day and they hadn't have restocked, I can safely say I would not have looked up the prices in that week and it would be out of print and I would have missed out. So very, very fortunate to my local comic book store for getting that in when they did. And then I have Monster Volumes 1 through 4 of the Perfect Edition. This has definitely been one of my favourite releases over the last little while. So, so, so grateful that it was reprinted. On the first shelf of my completed collection is one of my Pride and Joys, and that is Basara by Yumi Tamura Volumes 1, all the way through Volume 27 complete. For anyone who's a fan of old shoujo series, you might know that this is infamously out of print. But luckily for me, I was able to collect the whole series this year. And I'm not actually going to talk about the story behind how I actually got this series in this video. I'm actually going to save it for another video about how to hunt for out of print manga. When like Amazon, for example, is selling volumes for $100, 
how do you go about collecting series like that? And then up next I have Imadoki Volumes 1 through 5 Complete, a really cute shoujo series about gardening by Yu Watase. And then I have Demon Love Spell Volumes 1 through 6 Complete by the same mangaka who did Central Phrase and I Audit. So basically it means it's going to be fairly smutty. I've already read the first two volumes and I really really enjoyed it. So. On this next shelf I have 5 centimeters per second. I didn't really like this one shot that much. I guess I had high expectations going in and I guess they were too high and I just wasn't the biggest fan of it. And then I have Absolute Boyfriend Volumes 1 through 6 complete. If you're wondering why they look different from the American version, it's because they're actually the Singapore version, published in English, obviously. And then I have Are You Alice Volumes 1 through 7 by the same publisher. Unfortunately, they went out of business before they could publish Volume 8, but I think Yen Press has since picked up the series and finished it, so I do need to pick up the rest of these volumes. And then I have Because You Smile When I Sing, which is by the same mangaka that did Fruits Basket. And then I have Death Note. Doesn't really need a lot of introduction. It's Death Note. Next is a series that I deliberately keep on the back shelf because it breaks my heart to look at, and that is Drops of God Volumes 1 through 4 and the New World Volume. So the story behind this series is when Vertical picked it up, it really wasn't selling that well. And the original Japanese authors of this manga asked Vertical to do a time skip. They wanted readers to read this one specific part of the story, which is set in Australia, which I was really happy with. And so they went ahead and they skipped. And it's just so confusing. You don't really understand what's what's happening. And because the rest of the volumes and this new volume didn't sell very well, ultimately Vertical decided to pull the plug on the whole series. It's really unfortunate that we couldn't have at least had at least another volume five because I've never read New World and I never will because it doesn't make any sense. And then I have Forbidden Dance volume one through four complete. Haven't read this. And then I have A Gentleman's Alliance Volumes 1 through 7, which was really one of the first shoujo's I picked up, so I have a soft spot for this series. And then on this shelf, I have Dengeki Daisy Volumes 1 through 16 complete, another one of my favourites. Even if you don't like shoujo, the mystery in this one is fantastic, and so I would highly recommend it for all types of readers. And then I have Fruits Basket volume 1 all the way through 23 complete. This was a limited run box set by Madman Entertainment in Australia. There was only 500 of these complete little box sets made so it's an awesome collector's item to have on my shelf and I think Fruits Basket is fairly self-explanatory. It's fantastic if you haven't read it. I highly highly recommend it. And then I have the series that started this all for me. Kill Me Kiss Me. I remember going into the bookstore and picking out a manga and I actually picked out a manga by accident so whoops but this is volume one through five complete and I think I've read this about four times and a lot of people didn't like it but I think it's just got that like nostalgia value to me and I just love it and then on this shelf I have volumes 8 through 11 of the gentleman's alliance which makes it complete and then I have gravitation volumes 1 through 12 complete I don't have the spin-offs and I don't really care enough to get them, to be honest. And then Happy Marriage Volumes 1 through 10 complete. I was so happy when this got licensed. I could not believe it. I love it and I really hope that we see more of her works in English. And then I have High School Debut Volumes 1 through 13, a classic shoujo that I absolutely love. And then we have I Am Here Volumes 1 and 2. This one took me by surprise. I actually really, really enjoyed this. So on this shelf, I have Blackbird Volume 1 through 18 complete. I really enjoyed Blackbird. It's sort of like a paranormal smutty sort of romance similar to Demon Love Spell so if you have read that and you did enjoy it check out Blackbird and then I have Orange the complete collection 1 and 2 if you have never really read romance before I think Orange is a really good start like the romance is there but it's not like the main 
focus and it's really short as well so it doesn't take that long to read and it was just a fantastic journey to go on and the anime as well is also really good. And then I have Kare First Love Volumes 9 and 10 which is complete as well with the others on the back shelf. And then on this shelf I have my oversized little overflow thing of Uzumaki and Revolutionary Girl Utena 1 and 2 which I found quite confusing. I didn't really understand the plot of Revolutionary Girl Itana, so I might have to do a reread. And then I have my little light novel collection of the full Haruhi Suzumiya light novel series, including the rare dissociation novel. Um, I actually only started getting into light novels around the beginning of last year, early this year, and I always wanted to get Haruhi and I never did. And then I looked up the prices and I finally decided, yep, I'm going to read Haruhi, only to my horror to find out that Dissociation, Rampage, and The Sigh of Haruhi Suzumiya were horrendously out of print. Like, Dissociation was selling for like $200. And I walk into my local like anime manga store and their Dissociation was. So Dissociation I got for $11 and then I had to do a little bit more hunting for The Sigh and Rampage, which I think they cost me about $30 each with shipping from this comic book store. And then I have Spice and Wolf. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that that I've been on a Spice and Wolf binge lately and I have volumes 1 through to 11. Haven't gotten any more because I haven't actually bought any manga or any books actually for like the past month or two. I'm trying to save for a car so it's kind of on the back burner but still it'll get done. And then My Youth Romantic Comedy is Wrong volume 1. I loved this novel so much. It was hilarious. I really need to get volume 2. And then I have the Death March Rhapsody to the Parallel World volume 1. Haven't read this yet either. Sounds Euphonium. Loved it. Loved it. Onosaba, God's Blessing on this wonderful world. One and two. And then Bakke Monogatari Volume 1. And then Kizu Monogatari, which I have started reading and am really, really enjoying. And then back to the manga. And then I have Kare First Love Volumes 1, 3 to 8. The next shelf is probably one of my favourite shelves in the entire collection. I have Captive Heart Volumes 1 through 5 complete. This isn't the Shoujo B edition, as you can see. It's a old company in Singapore that used to publish manga in Australia. And then I have my Little Monster Volumes 1 through 13. And then this is one of my pride and joys uh, in my entire collection, to be honest. So, Please Save My Earth is, it's like a sci-fi romance series about a bunch of children and they have these recurring dreams, the same dreams, all of them, about living on the moon. And they sort of connect in on Earth and try to figure out what the dreams mean. It wasn't very popular when it was first published, um, but it's definitely picked up in popularity since then. So if you haven't heard about it, definitely check it out. Unfortunately, this series is out of print. There's a couple of volumes in the series that are going for upwards of about $100. Uh, this one here is probably, volume 13 is probably going to be your biggest challenge if you would like to collect this series. I was very, very, very lucky uh, just a couple of months back to find it in a comic book store in Melbourne for $5, still in shrink wrap. Actually, I found most of the series uh, in the same comic book store for about $5 each, which is why I've collected it. And then behind that shelf, I have my Love Com collection, volumes 1 all the way through 17 complete. I love Lovely Complex. If you have not checked this out, please, please, please do. Even if you don't like romance, it's more of a comedy than a romance and it is going out of print. So if you love comedy and you love like a lighthearted romance, then I definitely check out Love Com. And then I have Blank Slate, which is by the same mangaka that did Ottoman. And then I have probably what is my most prized series in the whole collection and that is Red River Volumes 1 through 28 complete. It cost me slightly over the US cover price, not including shipping, 
Um, but when you add the shipping on, it sort of factors in and it makes it equal to the Australian cover price. So not too bad. I wouldn't recommend paying that much for it, only because I sort of find that while the beginning and the end of the series is absolutely fantastic, the middle really drags and the plot devices are very, very repetitive. On this shelf, I have Ottoman Volume 1 through 18 complete. Really, really cute shoujo romance comedy series that is a gender bender, so definitely, definitely check it out. It's definitely one of the more unique ones that I think has been published lately. And then I have Mars Volume 1 through 16. This used to be my favorite series of all time, favorite romance of all time, everything of all time. But then as I read it again as an adult, it's just, it's really dramatic. I still enjoy it, but it's probably not my favorite anymore. So on this shelf, I have Peach Girl Volumes 1 through 8, which is the first half of the series. And then Peach Girl Change of Heart Volumes 1 through 10 complete. So in Japan, the whole Peach Girl series is 18 volumes, like there's there's no different parts, but the change sort of happened when Tokyo Pop finished releasing the first eight volumes, the manga revolution sort of started happening, and the story sort of reaches this point where it was like a good time for them to sort of create a spin-off so they could change the format of the physical volumes, and then they got so many requests to go back and do the first half of the series, which is why a lot of these change of hearts have the old logos, but all of the Peach Girls have the new logo. And then I have Peach Girl Volumes 1 through 3 of Size Story. And then I have SA or Special A as it's known by Viz in America. Volumes 1 through 17 complete. Found this in a bargain bin for $3 a piece, so that was pretty good because I've always wanted to read this series. And then I have Soiki Reload Volume 10. So it doesn't fit on the shelf with the rest of my Soiki volume, so I just put it up here. It's actually an English edition of Volume 10. It wasn't published by Tokyo Pop because they went out of business, but Chung Yi in Singapore published it. And then I have Soiki, the original series, Volumes 1 through 9 complete. And then I have Sayuki Reload Volume 1. On this shelf, I have Oran High School Host Club Volumes 1 through 18. And then I have Sailor Moon Volumes 1 through 12. Volumes 1 and 2 of Codename Sailor V and 1 and 2 of the short stories. So my Sailor Moon collection is complete. And then on this shelf, I have Sayuki Reload Volumes 2 through 9. Really disappointed that this was all that got licensed, so I actually haven't read the end of this because I'm too scared that it's going to end on a cliffhanger. And then I have Spell of Desire Volumes 1 through 5 complete, another Jose title that I was really happy that got licensed. And then I have Strobe Edge Volumes 1 through 10 complete. This series took me by surprise. I didn't expect to love it as much as I actually did. And then I have Tale of the Moon, Volumes 1 through 10, 12 and 14. Just missing a few volumes here, so it should actually be on the other shelf, but I do know how many I need to complete it. I think I need to get three more and then it's done. And then I have Voice Over Seiyuu Academy, Volumes 1 through 10. This is by the same mangaka that did Special A, and... It's just got such an amazing concept that even if you're not really into shoujo manga, I would still actually recommend it anyway if you enjoy anime and the process of anime and those types of things. And this is the last shelf of the completed series bookcase. I only have one row on this shelf because my cat loves paper. She loves to eat paper and I'm kind of horrified if I put too many books down here that she's going to discover that all of this is made out of paper. So I have Penguin Revolution Volumes 137 complete, Priceless, A Korean Manhwa Volumes 133 complete, by the same mangaka that did Kill Me Kiss Me which is one of my favourites so I definitely had to pick that up. And then Kurocha Volumes 1 through 10, Poor Volume 7 is faded because I bought this used looking for a replacement but it's not cheap and then La Cora do Oro or something along those lines volumes 1 through 17 complete if you like music 
you will love this series. It is amazing. It is out of print. It was sort of weird. I was looking for a replacement for one of the volumes and the whole series was just mysteriously out of stock, like every single volume. Normally a lot of series have a couple of volumes that are still in print that you can still pick up, but this one, almost every single volume has been like delisted. So yeah, it is out of print. And then I just have this Blackbird box set here because there's nowhere else for it to go because it's very large. And then on the top shelf, I have the rest of Monster, volumes five through nine complete. Paradise Kiss, volumes one through three of the Omnibuses complete. Pink by Kyoko Okazaki, haven't read this one yet, but because I really liked Healthy Skelter, I'm looking forward to it. Princess Jellyfish Volumes 1 and 2. And then over here I have probably one of my favourite series of all time, Real by Takiko Inoue. I do have Volumes 1 all the way through 14, but 7, 8 and 9 are being let out to a friend to read because I really want to get like everyone that I possibly can into Real. Um, it's a manga about wheelchair basketball, and it's not focused that much on basketball. It's more like a drama, so if that kind of interests you, definitely check it out. And then, Welcome to the Ballroom Volume 1. And then I have all this empty space, which I'm probably going to use to collect the rest of Welcome to the Ballroom and the rest of Princess Jellyfish. So, on this shelf, I have Midnight Secretary Volumes 1 through 7. This is complete. Really happy that this got licensed, but a little bit surprised that it got licensed. And then I have Hanukimi Volumes 1 all the way through to 23. Actually picked this up for $3 a piece in a bargain bin, so that was really unexpected and great because I'd wanted to collect it for a long time. So with that, that marks the end of my completed series and now behind this row is where my uncompleted series start. And then on this shelf I have volumes 11 and 12 of voiceover Seiyu Academy which is complete and then I have Black Butler volumes 1 to 22. Um, I'm not gonna lie I really haven't read a lot of Black Butler um, which is bad because they're really expensive and I just have almost the whole set. I'm pretty sure I'm just missing the latest volume that's come out and I went to see Book of Atlantic with some friends a couple of months back and I just remember being really shocked because it kind of evolves into this like episodic drama of CL and his butler solving mysteries and it evolves into something so much deeper and I just had no idea so Black Butler is really on my high priority list to actually start reading because I was just blown away. And then I have Dead Man Wonderland volumes one and two. And then I have Everyone's Getting Married volume one through five. The first volume didn't really impress me, but because it's a new Jose title by Shoujo Beat, I really want to show support for the Jose industry. And so I bought it and I'm kind of glad I did because it's actually picked up, like my interest has picked up in the following volumes. And then I have Haikyuu volumes one to three. Haikyuu is one of those series that I love but I just haven't found the time to buy. Just with the monthly release schedule, it just got a little bit hectic. And then I have Kiss Him Not Me volumes one through five. It's a Karancha series. They're just really expensive to pick up volumes. I don't know, I just, I put it off. I procrastinate and I love Kiss Him Not Me so that just makes me sad. And then I have Kuroko's Basketball volumes one to four. So I guess with this series, I haven't started reading it and I haven't really heard anything about it or watch the anime. So I'm just going to wait until I read the first volume, the first, these two volumes to decide whether or not I'm going to continue the series. On this next shelf, I have Kimi Toroke volumes one through 25. It's absolutely one of my favorite shoujo series at the moment. It is getting a bit long and I must admit I did sort of like fall off the wagon at about like volume 14 and I haven't read the other volumes um, but it is on my list of things to finish reading. And then I have My Love Story volumes 1 through 9. I really enjoy the anime. It's one of the few animes that I have actually watched and I did enjoy it. So again I'm just going to wait for volumes 10 through I think 13 or 14 is the last volume and then just binge it all in one go. 
And then behind that row, I have Say I Love You Volumes 1 through 15. This is not one of my favorite shoujo series. This is the favorite shoujo series. I am so happy that this got licensed. I absolutely loved it. I binge watched the anime in one whole day and I loved it. I can't even. And then I have Loveless. 1 through 12. Um, an interesting way that I sort of count my volumes is I count them by the numbers on the spine. So because this one says volumes 1 and 2, I count them as two volumes. Whereas if they were just like an omnibus that just had a volume 1, I just count it as one volume. So I currently say I have 1 through 12 of Loveless. And then I have Monkey High volumes 4 through 8. Picked this up in a bargain bin as well. Just need to get the first three and then I can read it. And then I have Iolet volumes four through eight. This is by the same manga cut that did A Demon Love Spell and Sensual Phrase. Um, kind of smutty, I would say. Yeah, no, her artwork is kind of smutty. And then I have Yotsuba volumes one through nine. I really love Yotsuba. I remember finding it through looking at the manga tag on Tumblr and like just seeing all these little like funny pages from it and I just knew that I had to have it. And then on the next shelf I have Blue Sleeper Flowers Volume 1 all the way through to Volume 37. So Boys Over Flowers was one of those series that was my dream series that I never thought I'd be able to get because it's so hard to find and it was just too expensive but I really 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 wanted to read it and so I always kept my eye out for it and it was always around like five six hundred dollars and I just could never afford that I never wanted to pay that and then one day I was looking on eBay and a woman was selling a set one through 34 and I bought it and I had to buy volume 35, 36 and 37 separately which is why some of these are X library copies they're kind of beaten up but for the most part they're okay so except for that faded spine which really annoys me so unfortunately they're still really really expensive to replace with non X library copies but I will keep my eye out in case I do ever find some cheap like decently used copies and then on this shelf I have Yotsuba volumes 10 through 13 and then I have Skip Beat volume 1 all the way through to volume 37. I originally wasn't going to collect Skip Beat but a bookstore was going out of business and they had a really really great deal on Skip Beat. I think each of these volumes was about $4 a piece and because it was just so out of print at the time and just so long I thought it's now or never. I am still two volumes behind because uh, I haven't really been keeping up to date with my new releases but I will get them eventually and I think once I get volume 38 it will officially be my longest running manga series. And then the last thing on this shelf is Sand Chronicles volume 1, 2, 6 and 7. So I have all the hard to find volumes I just need to fill in the other gaps. And then over here I have Anonymous Noise Volume 1, which I haven't started reading, but I'm really excited to. Say Her Boys High School Volume 8. I still need to grab the rest, but I saw this one in a bargain bin and I thought I will grab it. Yona of the Dawn Volume 1, which has been a recent pickup because I've heard so many good things and it just it reminds me of Red River. And then I have Butterflies and Flowers Volume 8. And then I have Dawn of the Arcana, Arcana, with volumes 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10. And then I have A Devil and Her Love Song, volumes 11, 12, and 13. So, continuing on from the next shelf, we have Sand Chronicles, volume 9 and 10. I was very, very lucky to get a copy of 10, still in a shrink wrap when it went out of print. And then I have Kami Summer Kiss Volumes 1 to 21. I'm slightly behind with Kami Summer Kiss. I know that we've got the final volume coming out soon with the limited edition. Haven't actually read too much of this to sort of know if I like it to even justify owning 20 volumes, but here we are. It's just my reality and I'm sure I'm going to love it. I'm sure I'm going to love it. I just need to sit down with it. I have Aura Summer Teacher Volume 4 through 6, 8 and then 10 through 19. And then I have A Devil and Her Love Song Volumes 2, 4, 
6 and then 7 through 10. So I still need to get three more volumes of this before my series is complete. So I just realized that I never actually filmed an outro video for my collection, but yes, so that is the end of my manga collection for the year 2017. I really hope you enjoyed the video, it's taken me a really long time to film, and if you have a manga collection of your own, feel free to leave a link to either the YouTube video or a photo, I would love to see it, I love looking at other people's collections. So feel free to tell me about your collection in the comment section below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!